All right, Culture Dog, Sam Hatch, back again with another Laserdisc video. And this is my first time doing my Laserdisc collection. I showed you my players, and I talked a little bit about the format and why I love it, and why I'm a little insane for you know, spending time purchasing Laserdisc in my uh, older years when it died as a format back in the early 2000s. But still cool. You know it. Uh, I'm going to go through, eventually, my A through Z here. Uh, but I forget, I'd break it down to a few subgenres. We'll do my music discs, uh, do my um, Japanese imports, and then Criterion discs and box sets, and then get into the A to the Z. Yeah, nuts and bolts of it all. I don't have too many music discs. As a format, it wasn't as exciting as a music fan. Uh, it doesn't really reflect the same kind of uh, eclectic collection I have in CD format. Um, uh, Laserdisc was a lot more like when Blu-ray first came out. You could get, you know, I think there was like a Dave Matthews disc. There was a David Gilmore disc and like three other things. And that was it. And that's, as a music fan, that's all you listen to. And it was kind of just aimed at um, just kind of like middle-aged people that they thought would go out and purchase uh, an expensive new piece of, uh, you know, merchandise. Um, Laserdisc was kind of similar to that, except for some of the other countries. Japan was wicked cool about... Um, Lots of metal and hard rock and stuff like that being released. But on the flip side, they were wicked expensive. Um, so these are my uh, music laser discs. So it's a pretty small collection, but we'll tear through. Uh, starting off with the Chieftains, Bells of Dublin. I had seen these guys opening for Sarah McLachlan back in 95. And I thought, oh, cool. Maybe I'll pick them up on Laserdisc. And uh, thinking, you know, I didn't want to hear some more ripping Celtic music. I was listening to a lot of uh, Clannad at the time and... Uh, well, Caper Cayley was Scottish, but, you know, Irish and Scottish stuff. Um, but then I didn't realize Bells of Dublin uh, was more of a um, Christmassy thing. There's uh, Marianne Faithful doing uh, I Saw Three Ships of Sailing and Rebel Jesus with Jackson Brown, stuff like that. Uh, so it's not really, you know, rip-roaring, uh, you know, doing jigs in your living room kind of stuff all the time. Uh, that's it's kind of cool, and there's a little bit more of a documentarian uh, feel to a lot of it, too, uh, showing them meeting up with all the people that they were doing... Uh, uh, duets with and uh, it's cool it's good stuff I, in fact it's almost the season so i might fire that up again it's been a while uh this disc i had to get i had picked up the vhs in uh i think virgin records in san francisco but i must have gotten this at tower records in boston dead can dance toward the within amazing band amazing performance this was uh getting close to the end of their first tenure as a band they split up in 95 or 96 and didn't reform until 2005 or so. And I was lucky enough to see their show in Boston on that tour. In fact, I had the CD counterpart. They only made like a thousand like professionally mixed copies of each show on the tour. You could order it at the venue. Um, but yeah, this disc is great. It's kind of a nice counterpart to Baraka, if you've ever seen that. It's a Ron Fricky flick. It's um, a visual tone poem and just gorgeous uh, cinematography and great music as well. Um, the Host of Seraphim, the song that was on that uh, film, you've heard in The Walking Dead, Season 1. Frank Darabont used it at the end of The Mist. And you've heard Lisa Gerard's vocals on Gladiator, and you've heard probably at least 30 people ripping off Lisa Gerard on other movie soundtracks. Uh, but Killer Band, great performances, and some cool interviews with Lisa Gerard and Brendan Perry on there as well. Uh, so highly, highly recommend picking it up. There is a, a DVD version on the box set, the Dead Can Dance box set. Um, but I think that's like Dolby for Logic 2.0, like, you know, low resolution. So I, the, the PCM track on this thing is going to smoke that anyways. Uh, great release. Uh, and uh, I found out that Gary Holt from the band Exodus is a huge fan. So if you're a metalhead, you might like them too. Speaking of metal, for those about to rock... Monsters of Moscow is a really cool disc. Uh, kind of a mix of a, a bit of a documentary uh, showing the downfall of communism and a bunch of coups that were staged uh, that led about a turn of power and then a bunch of Western rock bands coming to kind of spread the joy and ch good cheer on the Ticino Air Force Base. So kind of this weird, iconic military uh, camp being invaded by sweaty Americans uh, yielding guitars uh, or, and some Australians too as well. Um, and there is a band, EST, I think they were a Russian band as well on the bill. They have a song called Bully on there. But Pantera, uh, right on the uh, the frontier of their uh, newfound groove metal period, uh, Cowboys from Hell era, 
I have three tracks on there that's killer. Uh, Black Crow's a few, few tracks, ACDC Headlines closes the show out, but the Metallica performance is uh, totally where it's at. And when they play Enter Salmon and there's 500,000 Russians just freaking out in the crowd, it's it's real total like goosebump material. Um, it's really intense, too, because uh, the military guys were hired as security, so it's almost like you, you, know, you think you're edging towards like an Altamont situation because they're beating the crap out of the kids with bully sticks and everything, so... Uh, yeah, real fascinating disc and a great, great sound on that as well. This is some Peter Gabriel next, all about us. And uh, this is a cool release, uh, Salisbury Hill notwithstanding, because that's from a different album. It's all the videos from the album Us, uh, and including uh, Blood of Eden, my favorite track on that album, which I'd never seen a video on MTV. Uh, but Digging in the Dirt and Steam, you probably had seen a few times. Uh, there's also a really cool um, Kiss That Frog video. Uh, heavy on CG, done by Brett Leonard, who had made uh, uh, Hideaway and Lawnmower Man, so you know where you're you're going with that. Um, but it's cool. The CLV side has like a lot of behind the scenes of making of the videos and everything, and then the CAV side has all the videos in slow mo and everything, including Kiss That Frog, which I think was a some sort of motion control ride or something like that as well, or some sort of multimedia experience. Uh, but it's a cool disc. This one I got for free. I uh, hit a used store and uh, music and vinyl mostly, and I saw a couple box sets. Uh, I think like Pioneer Special Editions of the Doors and Natural Born Killers and, and the Toy Story box. And I was like, "Woo!" So I made an offer on just those, and then the the owner of the store was apparently keen on just dumping all the laser discs, and he gave me his whole whole collection for that price. Uh, I ditched a Bob Dylan disc because I'm really not into Bob Dylan. It was uh, the unplugged laser disc, and I tried, but I just wimped out and got rid of it. <laughs> so it's in Goodwill somewhere. Uh, but this one, Katie Lang, Harvest of Seven Years, Cropped and Chronicled. Uh, not really a fan. I did like when Kyle MacLachlan played Katie Lang on uh, SNL back in the day and the Twin Peaks era. Uh, but I do like Constant Craving, which is not on here. Yeah, haven't gotten a chance to watch it yet, but I got it just in case. If you like Keithy Lang, you're going to love Metallica, Cliff em All. This is a disc I actually ordered from Suncoast. They had a catalog that you had to buy, which was weird. You could buy this catalog, and Image Entertainment helped put it out, and it had a listing of every title that was available, because there was a lot of discs that just were not stocked. They were available, they were sitting in stores and, or warehouses in California, but you could never get them. Uh, so you'd show you know the guy at the counter what you wanted, and then you'd have to wait forever. I mean, if I ordered something from Amazon, it'd probably be at my doorstep by the time this video is over. This was nothing like that. You ordered it and you waited, and you'd go in and shop, and a couple months later they go, "Oh, hey, that laser disc you ordered came in," and I had to have this. I had the VHS, which uh, I actually traded a six pack of beer for that VHS tape. Uh, I did. I didn't even have uh, the ability to go buy it because I was too young, but I knew this guy in my neighborhood, and he wanted to get drunk one night, and he's like, I'll give you this tape if you can get me a six-pack. And I'm like, I'm finding the way. So I made sure I got that, and we used to watch that every day, me and my friends. Uh, I was in a band at the time, so totally inspired by this. A lot of great Cliff Burton footage. It's mostly an homage to Cliff Burton. It's a mix of fan footage and uh, official you know, live stuff. Uh, but even a lot of Dave Mustaine moments from early on in the band. Uh, some of Cliff's solos on here are killer, and particularly the performance of For Whom the Bell Tolls at the Day on the Green in San Francisco in 85. Uh, so, seminal, seminal release from Metallica Van. And uh, really cool to have on Laserdisc. This I picked up at a Strawberries on a whim. La Carrera Panamericana with Pink Floyd. And uh, people used to get angry about this release because it's not a performance disc. It's uh, Nick Mason and um, David Gilmore hanging out, racing their cars in South America. Apparently, there was this race, and it was wicked dangerous. And I believe they were just stock cars or semi-stock. Um, and so there's a bit of a documentary showing the early ages of this race and how dangerous it was. And and uh, they decided to do a kind of uh, tribute to it and, and restage the race in the early 90s. Uh, so these guys are, you know, cruising around in their cars while Pink Floyd music's playing in the background a lot. Um, so it's kind of cool. If you like Top Gear, you totally dig this. And this, I remember fondly. It was a blazing hot day, summer of 95. I was hanging out and bored with a friend of mine, and we're like, let's go buy some laser discs. And uh, trucked on out in my Cutlass Supreme to Strawberries and got Pink Floyd Pulse, Live at Earl's Court in 94. A very noisy release. Uh, I have that time-based corrector I mentioned and showed you in a previous video that totally clears up the reds and the purples. 
Um, but if you don't have that, it can be a little noisy. If you can clean that stuff up, though, it's definitely reference quality and really great stuff to show off to uh, you know friends coming over and a oh, killer soundtrack as well. It's a nice jacket. Uh, the, the inserts are great. The sleeves uh, for the discs are not uh, poly-lined paper or elephant condoms. They're um, just uh, very uh, shiny uh, photo paper, and like you'd find on certain LPs. But laser discs being a lot heavier than LPs, you drop one in, and it just tears right through. It's also a really tight fit, so maybe not the best choice, but very beautiful looking. Um, my only uh, you know, disappointment is uh, that I actually saw this tour at uh, Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Mass. in 1994, and that's an open-air stadium. It was raining, so it would capture all of the laser beams, and you could follow them from the stage all the way to the cloud cover or into the eyes of airplane pilots. And uh, this is an, like a closed stadium indoors, and it kind of loses some of that magic, uh, but stuff uh, on stage is still on fire. Really good uh, performances, and I was always more of a David Gilmore fan than a Roger Waters fan anyways. Don't tell anybody. This, I think, was my first Japanese import disc, and it was kind of hard to find on VHS at the time, so I snapped it up at Laser Craze in Boston. Rush, Exit Stage Left, a Moving Pictures era uh, tour concert. There's really not much documentary stuff. I think Neil Peart does a few voiceovers here and there. Um, but yeah, killer release. I used to watch this all the time. In fact, I used to have a guy from work who would come over and be like, Hey man, put that Rush video on. Let's watch that again. Uh, again, I do have the OB strip. It's not on here because it looked ugly covering up all that stuff. Um, but it is around. Uh, I can get it if you need to buy it, even though I'm, I'm not selling it. But uh, This I actually picked up at a uh, drive-in. If you ever heard of those, they're mythical places where you take your car to see movies. And we have a couple of them in the state here. And uh, I found a, um, a Laserdisc crate at a flag... Uh, t- flag sale a flea market slash tag sale flea market that they have on sundays and uh you know as a laser disc collector it's kind of rough finding them in the wild because there's a blessing and a curse the blessing being that if they're a laser disc at a goodwill or savers uh the staff aren't going to know that they're laser discs and think they're vinyl and they're going to price them 50 cents to a dollar and mix them in with all the old like you know loretta lynn vinyls and stuff uh, the flip side is that if you're out and about at a flea market and you see a table with a bunch of 12-inch squares, you're going to get excited and go, oh, eh, no laser discs. But this time I looked under the table where all the vinyl was on top, and under it I saw that old gold banner on the top of the MGM discs that said Letterbox Edition, and I was like, wait a second. So I thumbed through, and I picked this up, uh, Rush, through the camera eye. And I had always kind of written this off as something that was an anachronism once the Chronicles laser disc came out. Um, not so. It's got a couple of uh, double dips, uh, Disney Early Warning, Subdivision, and, Subdivisions, and Tom Sawyer on here. But there's also videos for Vital Signs, The Body Electric, After Image, The Enemy Within, and Countdown. And me being a big Grace Under Pressure fan, I was totally psyched to watch this. And uh, and then two of my favorite Signals tunes as well. Uh, and some of the videos actually rehash the same sets. I don't know if like one wasn't uh, approved for broadcast, and then they said, "Oh, we'll just use the same outfits and sets and stuff." Uh, but really cool stuff. So definitely that was worth picking up. Carrying on the Rush tradition, this is another one of those discs I had to order from that catalog and had to wait forever to get the Grace Under Pressure tour release. And uh, it does have the big money from Power Windows, the a long extended video on there on the back, but. Uh, a lot of cool stuff um, from the 84 tour, maybe, in Canada. So it's going to be Puffy Hair, uh, Getty Lee, and a lot of uh, you know headless Steinbergers and stuff. Not quite as cool as the Rickenbacker period, uh, but very cool release. And uh, you get the cool, I think it was Joe Flaherty from SCTV doing the, uh, the count bits before uh, the weapon. Uh, so that was pretty fun. This one I had on VHS for the longest time and just picked up not too recently because of a bonus track that's not on uh, the uh, DVD counterpart. They came out with Exit Stage Left, Grace Under Pressure Tours, and uh, this release on a DVD box set called Rush Replay Times 3. A Show of Hands is the uh, Hold Your Fire Tour video, and uh, there's a track, if you read uh, the listing here on the back, which is super tiny print, but there's a track called Lock and Key from uh, Hold Your Fire. That's on here, and uh, it's not on the DVD, and I don't believe it's on the VHS either. But I picked it up, and uh, it's not on here. And apparently it was only on the initial pressings, and they eventually would put on the back here, they would have a sticker on the cellophane that says, 
lock and key that is not performed on this album. But once you tear the cellophane off, you can't tell the difference. Um, so I was kind of disappointed, but I don't like disappointment. I don't like taking no for an answer. So I picked up Rush, a show of hands, and it looks identical on the back, but it's got lock and key on it. And the only way to tell the difference is if you actually take the disc out and the inner ring of the disc, the label is going to be hot pink. If that's the case, it's a British pressing or first pressing and it's got lock and key on it. Uh, so I was actually lucky enough to find it online. You can actually see if people are cool enough to take photos on their auctions on like eBay or something, and you can actually see the disc and you'll see the pink, you'll know it's going to have lock and key on it. Uh, that said, I think it's PDO UK did the pressing, so it's got a little bit of laser rot. Not too much, definitely not to be a deal breaker. Uh, but I kept the other version for the pristine visuals, and I kept this one for the rarity of having lock and key. So definitely uh, was worth double dipping in that case. And this has all the heavy hitters, Chronicles, all the videos that, you know, like Limelight, Tom Sawyer, Red Barchetta, Closer to the Heart, The Trees. I actually picked this up. I remember driving out to the Sun Coast for about a half an hour in my Cutlass Supreme, and it crapped out on me on the ride home. So I was so excited. This was sitting on the seat next to me. I was like, I'm going to go home and watch this Rush Laser Disc. And uh, nope, I needed the ride instead and had to wait around forever. Uh, the good old days. This I picked up recently. I actually had the VHS that I'd gotten from a used record store in Boston. Um, but I found a fan from California of the band uh, Yellow Magic Orchestra who had picked it up just as a completist and uh, had it around and uh, decided to offload the stuff that, you know, he didn't have a Laserdisc player. And uh, I, th I think I got it for less than 10 bucks, which is crazy because opened, uh, this thing usually goes for at least 60 or so. And he had a brand new copy. Uh, Ryuichi Sakamoto Beauty. Ryuichi Sakamoto used to be one of the members of Yellow Magic Orchestra and then uh, broke out as an actor and film composer. You probably heard his stuff on you know movies like Snake Eyes or a lot of Bernardo Bertolucci flicks like Sheltering Sky and uh, Last Emperor. Uh, but this was his period. Um, he did a lot of like minimalist stuff, electronic albums, but then also a lot of classical music and like uh, chamber piece kind of music. But this was his world slash pop period. He did some stuff with Jill Jones, who was part of the Prince camp. And uh, Yusu Endure did a track that I don't think is on here, but um, really cool release and some cool interviews and stuff as well. And this does have the Obi strip. Uh, Obi strips, as far as I'm concerned, are just kind of glorified receipts. Uh, they are pretty useless, but because nobody can really read what it says unless you read Japanese, uh, people tend to fetishize these and go, oh my god, look at the amazing uh, eccentricity and, uh, and, and alien dialogue here. It must be amazing, but it's just, you know, giving you information about the disc and sometimes ads for other discs and stuff. It's like akin to going into a Barnes & Noble and buying a book and then not being able to resell it without the receipt. You know, it's kind of useless, but... I always make sure I keep them around in case I have to get rid of them. But this one didn't ruin the cover art. My fiancé says it looks like he's receiving oral pleasure there, so I'll leave that up to you. This I also picked up from that same lot that had the Katie Lang disc, and uh, I haven't seen this in ages, actually. The Great Rock and Roll Swindle Sex Pistols. I always think this is an old 80s disc, but it's actually, I think, a pressing from 92. Um, but yeah, if you like uh, Katie Lang, you're going to love the Sex Pistols. <laughs> I believe I picked this up on the same day I got uh, Pulse by Pink Floyd. I think me and my friend got bored and ended up driving back to Strawberries to buy more laser discs, and I picked up uh, Zoo TV live in Sydney from U2. I was a big U2 fan when I was a kid, uh, War, Boy, October, that stuff, and then kind of started petering off until I was just like a moderate fan for uh, Octung Baby. Uh, that said, there's some good stuff. Um, Mysterious Ways is really hot, Bullet the Blue Skies. Got that cool, like, heavy-handed moment where the, the crosses turn into swastikas and stuff, and uh, really intense stuff. Uh, that said, I am not really a fan of Bono's kind of stagecraft at this period. He was doing his characters, and so he was like Mr. McFisto, which was just like the devil, but speaking like Catherine Hepburn. But he would perform songs as these characters, like With or Without You is pretty much entirely ruined because he's singing it as this character. It's like, you know, just shut the hell up sing the song like a singer-songwriter and, you know, feel it. Like, I don't want to see you singing the song as Captain Jackass, you know? Cram it up your ass, Bono. So, <laughs> EBN also, I think, did some of the interstitial stuff. EBN was this cool group that, uh, I believe they were from Rhode Island, that did a lot of interesting uh, video mashup stuff, and they would make uh, sonic and visual, like, compositions out of uh, sampling things like, you know, Harrison Ford from Patriot Games and the president at the time. Uh, still blown away by what they were able to do. 
All right, don't judge me. Get ready. You're going to judge me. I see you judging me. Yanni, live at the Acropolis, is a hot disc. you got to get this. I, like a ton of other people, got turned on to this from PBS. And that this was like printing cash for them. Anytime they had a fundraiser, they're like, roll out the Yanni. We're going to load up some dough from people. Uh, and until Michael Flatley and Lord of the Dance came along. That was their second cash cow. Um, but this release, I picked this up at Leechmere. Remember that? Probably not. But if you do, <laughs> I picked it up there. And, uh, yeah, the band is hot as hell. I mean, there's a great drum solo. There's a great bass solo. There's a great dueling violin solo. And, uh, sure, he's got a turd lip, but it's pretty cool. And great compositions, great locale. Uh, the orchestra is smoking and, uh, yeah, really good disc and awesome sound on that as well. This I picked up as a whim, uh, on a whim actually at, uh, Strawberries and it's a little beat up, but Yes Year's Retrospective. It was a cool, uh, documentary that was a counterpart to a box set they had come out with. Uh, and, uh, it doesn't really have much performance. There is some performances and a few videos and things like that interspersed, but not full performances. Uh, but that said, it's kind of like a behind the music before there was a behind the music and really gets into the nitty gritty of the formation of the band and the tumultuous period and the breakup between Rick Wakeman and John Anderson, particularly. Uh, then the Trevor Rabin period and then working all the way up to, I think, the Union period in the early 90s. Uh, fascinating disc. Really, really cool stuff. And uh, that's it for the music proper discs. I do have a few things that are weird... Uh, like little curiosity pieces that image catalog I mentioned actually came out with a laser disc version. And this came free with a lot I got recently. And, uh, yeah, this is from 1992. And if you wanted to go to, uh, where was it? Sam Goody music land or Suncoast, you could check this disc out. It has a little legend on the back, breaking down what everything means and like what studio it is, if it's color, if it's got CX encoding and, uh, yeah, it's all CAV frame by frame. So you could key in, uh, a frame number and find out all the information about a certain release, but it's this cute little eight inch disc in this little, uh, kind of cloth protector sleeve. Really interesting stuff. Totally useless. I mean, unless you want to time travel, put some crystals in your time machine and go back to the nineties and order some stuff. This you saw a little bit. If you saw my earlier laser disc, uh, player collection video, I actually showed some of the video of it. Uh, it was from that same lot. I got a Mitsubishi laser disc gallery demo. And it was just made to hustle players and Mitsubishi TV. So you could be like, look, the dot crawl on that Toshiba sucks, but this Mitsubishi is top quality. And it's a lot of pictures of you know, beautiful people and beautiful locales and everything like that. But it's kind of a cool demonstration disc to throw on a loop or something if you have company coming over during the cocktail hour of LaserDisc night. Uh, this I had to get because, uh, you know, getting into the LaserDisc period was interesting because coming uh, off uh, VHS where... You just had stuff that was on a square on your TV, panned and scanned, and you never really thought too much about the setting of the TV. You just plugged in the TV and watched stuff. Uh, but once you started getting into letterboxing and proper presentation, uh, you had to start thinking about calibrating your television, setting you know, things up to so it uh, represented well, what the film was supposed to look like. Uh, so a video standard was released, and that was the benchmark release uh, with all the test signals for setting up your display. And then this came out after. This is the AC3 Dolby Digital version video essentials and uh it is really essential or it was uh the first side you know has a lot of the audio stuff to set up your 5.1 surround sound system and then the second side has all the signals uh like the pluge signal with the blacker than black bar to help you tune in your contrast or your contrast and brightness and uh the contrast settings are really kind of useless in a non-crt setting uh so if you have like a modern display it's not going to help as much uh but that said uh it's got the cool um blue filter included in here so you can put it over your eyes when you look at the color bars and tune in your tint and color and all that stuff and it's got a whole uh super uh cav uh, section of video test material and if you have some calibration tools you can really go to town on it with this so i still use it occasionally so definitely a important release for setting up your gear correctly that's it for my music and ancillary weirdness fit video discs uh we're getting to my um japanese import laser disc next so I'll get that fired up soon. Thanks for everybody for subscribing and all the cool comments. It's uh, nice bumping into all these other LaserDisc aficionados out there. Glad to hear that it's not just me, that uh, all, all these other people from around the world also have the bug and are just into uh, shiny silver platters of awesome. So uh, thanks for uh, all the comments and everything. Leave some more down below, and I'll uh, respond to you toot sweet, and uh, we'll see you at the next video shortly. Thanks.